Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that all are doing well, uh, despite the craziness that the world continues to be going through every single day. It's been a few days since uh, our last video update, but I wanted to share a beautiful idea that I came upon, as well as make a request. There is a Tussock that we have in our Parsha this week that shows an interesting reaction that Avram Avinu has to the death of Sarah. Tamat Sarah Bekiriyat Arba, he Chavron, that Sarah passed away. And all of a sudden, Vayavo Avraham Lispod Lisara, Avram comes to eulogize Sarah, the Lifkota, and to cry for her. And so many wonder, it seems to be that the order of events here is incorrect. First, Avraham eulogizes Sarah, and then he cries over her after that. Wouldn't it make sense to cry first and then eulogize? Isn't that the typical order of events? And Nitziv offers a wonderful answer by Naftali Tzvi Uda Berlin, the former Rosh Hashiva of Yeshiva Svalaj, and he says, that something happened after Sari Iminu died, something that the text does not record for us. And it's that after she passed away and word got out, people began gathering around the home of Sarah and Avraham. We know that their home was open to everyone. The whole world could come visit their home with guests for meals, sleeping, whatever it might be. They mastered the mitzvah of Hachnasas Orchem, of welcoming and guests. And says the Nitziv that people came to gather around their tent, around their home, right after word got out. And Avraham had a choice. He could have fallen into a deep sense of sadness and crying and depression over the loss of his wife, or, as the Nitziv says, he could have used this unbelie unbelievably deeply painful and emotional event to do something positive with. And he chose that option. Says the Nitziv, that he realized that he had two options here. One was that he could eulogize Sarah now when everyone was there, or he could eulogize her later when not everyone perhaps would have been able to show up for the funeral procession. And says the Netziv, Avraham chose to eulogize her now, Berov Am with more people, because to do something as powerful as eulogizing Sarah Imenu Berov Am, with the most possible people present, there would be no greater Kiddush Hashem, there would be no greater commitment to her legacy than to, in a sense, hold in those emotions momentarily, focus on the legacy that she left, share that with the world, and only then afterwards allow yourself to break down and feel the true pain and sorrow of losing his life partner. Perhaps we can take as a message from this that we understand that there are different times for different moments in our lives, that there are events in which we have to maybe close the door, be in private, cry, experience true pain, which I know many of us have had over the last several weeks, the last month plus. But then there are also moments that we have to not turn off that pain, but almost compartmentalize those tears and say, hey, we are allowed to feel that anger, that pain, that rage, that sadness that we are all experiencing. But how are we going to utilize it for something practical, for something mean meaningful? And says the Nitziv, when the time and opportunity comes to utilize something to be brought into the public, Barov Am, to bring it to the whole world and the world stage, that is something that we must utilize to the highest, to the strongest of our abilities. And so perhaps we can understand that in the time that we're living now, that there have been those times to be in private and those times to be in pub public. And I'd like to make a push next week. There is going to be this massive rally in Washington, D.C. We are blessed to be a part of a community that sees this as a priority and the Federation here is sponsoring five buses to go from our community for well over a hundred people and that is the minimum they're hoping to do more if there is more of a need but we are hoping to bring over a hundred people from our Rochester Jewish community down to DC to join friends from all over the country to protest and to stand up for what's right to stand right in front of the White House and say to the President of the United States of America, the leader of the free world, to please continue to hear the plight of our brothers and sisters in Israel. We have to also show our thanks for all the support that we have received thus far. And it's important for as many people as possible to show up. So if you're listening to this and you're on the fence, maybe I should go, maybe I shouldn't go. If you're listening to this and you're not even sure what I'm talking about, please 
do whatever you can to a learn more please feel free to reach out to me about it and number two um if you are looking on how to get there or the best way to uh be involved please also reach out it's important that everyone that is humanly possible and capable to show up should show up for this monumental event in american and world jewish history we take this moment to wish everyone a beautiful calm and restful day and if we don't speak before have a wonderful shabbos and god willing we will all speak and share with good news soon